Let's talk about talk, it. Talk, talk, talk. Let's go deep. We all have something to share. No share with Dr. Dave. Welcome to the Nal Share with Dr. Dave Learning Experience. This is Dr. Dave Cornelius. This is an introduction to the concept of generative leadership to thrive. I ask, do we need a new way of leadership to enable teams and organizations to thrive in complex and adaptive systems? Yes. Generative leaders, the pioneers of the future, recognize that staying stagnant isn't an option. Generative leaders aim to reimagine their business context to benefit those within their circle of influence and those adjacent to it. The evolution of leadership began with the great man theory during the first industrial revolution, 1760 to 1869. The idea was that leadership is born, not made. We're now in the fourth industrial revolution. 2016 to present, according to many, the era of cyber-physical systems, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and robotics. The leadership style needs to be generative, a human-centered approach during the volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous VUCA business climate. At this time, we will have four generations working together, which include one, boomers, two, Gen X, three, Gen Y, that we call millennials, and four, Gen Z. The Generative Leadership to Thrive presentation is designed for leaders at all levels who want to develop the skills they need to thrive in today's complex and ever-changing world. At the end of this micro-learning experience, you will discover the Ubuntu principles and values. Explore eight generative agile leadership tenets, which we call GAL tenets. Be familiar with the deliver value concept. Ubuntu principles. I see you. I value you. I welcome you. I see you underscore empathy and understanding. It's about recognizing others, their feelings, thoughts, and perspectives. It's about making sure everyone feels seen and acknowledged for their individuality. I value you, recognize the unique contributions every person brings to the table. It's about understanding that every team member adds value uniquely, and these individual contributions together lead to a stronger whole team. I welcome you, inclusivity and openness. It's about creating an environment where everyone feels welcome, accepted, and part of the group, regardless of background. There are four Ubuntu values. One, patience and kindness. Two, safety. Three, partnership. Four, resilience. Patience and kindness emphasize patience and kindness in our interactions. It's about treating others with respect, understanding, and compassion, especially when we're facing challenges. Two, safety. Focus on creating safe spaces, whether physically, emotionally, psychologically, in a safe environment, people are more likely to feel comfortable expressing themselves and contributing to their full potential. Three, partnership. Describe the power of working together. It underlies that we can achieve more through cooperation and mutual support than individually. Four, resilience. This is about the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. It's about fostering an attitude of strength, perseverance, and determination in the face of adversity. Resilience help us bounce back from challenges and learn and grow from them. So yeah. kind of a real life example, um, back in uh, 2020, when uh, this COVID craziness hit the world and everything kind of shut down, nobody had ever seen anything like this, right? We've been on this planet for a bit of time. We've never seen anything like this. And everybody's trying to figure out, okay, what do we do? Well, the organization I work for, uh, the, our CEO, uh, a guy named Curtis Height, you know, we had just all of a sudden, all of our major customers were all these giant companies that were being effective, like trans, you know, like airlines, 
a cruise world. I mean, just technology companies, all these things, and they're just stopping spending and all these things. And so instead of our leader coming and just being like, we just got to cut heads. He came out to, you know, a couple thousand all old employees and started doing these weekly kind of like um, open conversations online because everybody was at home and just start saying, hey, here's what we're going to do. Very open, very honest. Um, we don't know, obviously don't have a crystal ball where this thing's going, but this is the things we're doing. This is what, and, and so much so that because of the vision he laid out and coming from heart is, is, is a good person, that a huge percentage of people inside of the company reached out to him and said, Curtis, cut my pay cut my pay, take money out of what you guys pay me so that we can help these other people in the company that right now they just lost their billable job because I don't want to see them get cut. And it was such a huge outpouring, but it started, I think, because of where his heart was, which is we want to stay in business, obviously, yes, to continue to fight another day. But it was a place that he came from of genuineness and openness. And I think that that really kind of gave a lot of us at the time I'm building a house Dr. Dave, as you remember, yeah, that's a really bad time to be building a house. I'd already started it. And I'm like, oh, wow, I might not have a job. We might not, you know, we might be under a bridge, whatever. But the case was, is because of the way he led from that place of generative leadership, it gave this peace. And it wasn't just a bunch of words. This was action that then followed up. And it was powerful. It changed my life. Tenets. You will explore the eight tenets of generative agile leadership, a style of leadership that focuses on creating and growing people to have a new or change experience. So here are the eight generative agile tenets. Number one is abundance mindset. Number two, we focus on we, willing and enabled. We trust you to achieve our goals. Four, win and lose as a team. Five, partner and have conversations to learn more. Six, run the experiment and evaluate the hypothesis. Seven, what did we learn from failure to grow? And eight, fun and joy. One, abundance mindset. We have the capacity to share with others. As leaders, we have a responsibility to share our knowledge and skills with others, develop a culture of learning and growth within our organization. Let's hear from Adrian Terry what he has to say about an abundance mindset. Yeah. So let, let's talk about abundance mindset, because when I think of that, you know, you came to mind immediately when I was thinking of the people that I should talk to about this. And everyone has lots of different in, interpretation. Um, so. When we talk about generative leadership, right, that uh, where we're embracing this mindset of collaboration, empowerment, and growth, um, where we're creating these environments where individuals and themes and teams can thrive, contribute with their unique talents, and you know, as a collective, achieve success. How do you define abundance mindset? Um, yeah, no, it's a fantastic question. When I think of an abundant mindset, um, as a leader, um, it makes me think of um, this notion that there is enough for everyone. And when I say enough for everyone, any and everything that is good, uh, uh, that is wholesome, that is profitable, uh, that is an advantageous for both the leaders and their employees and followers, there is enough for everyone. There's enough revenue to be made, enough food to go around. And so the general idea that my sharing of myself won't result in me not having enough or me missing out. Now, when I talk about goodness, if there's enough good to go around, I mean, I mean that in every capacity, new opportunities, um, opportunities for advancement, uh, opportunities to be on the spotlight on stage, microphone style, because you're presenting, um, um, given that opportunity to the employees so that the broader organization can see their uh, talents, their skills, and their gifts. Um, on a higher level, though, if I were to deepen the definition, Dr. Dave, I would say it's not only that I have uh, uh, enough, but that my cup is continuously overflowing. Mm. 
of, of, of any and all of that good stuff we just talked about. And, and that my supply will never cease. So it's the difference at, let's say, at looking at some finite inventory. When you think of like a, a fixed set number of boxes sitting in a warehouse, you can count them all versus um, uh, a natural underground spring that is continuously providing fresh water. There's abundance in both of those scenarios. It's just that the warehouse mentality might cause the leader to hoard a little bit because it might run out. That's right. But when you are connected to an ever flowing spring, you, there there is no running out. It's 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 you you're you're always getting what you need right when you need it. The second generative agile leadership tenet is focus on we, willing and enabled. The best results come from working together. Co-create strategies for building resilient teams and promoting collaboration. But let's learn from Lizzie Morris, what she has to say about focus on we. I mean, I'm thinking about your program, right? Um, generative leadership to thrive um, and the modules that you've put together. Because I think one of the things a leader has to admit and be okay with, you don't have to have all the answers. Nobody's saying you're a bad leader if you don't have these answers. If you can't solve for what I'm talking about. Nobody's saying you have to solve for it. But what you want to do is be a facilitator of the solution. Right? So go hunt or talk to people about hunting to find these things because I have all these humans and I don't know how to deal with all of them. I know what I've been commissioned to do and I'm good at what I've been commissioned to do. I'm good at thinking strategically. But strategy around making humans work well together, it's not something I've dedicated time to. And it's not something the industry globally has really put time in to give leaders. Do you know what I mean? The idea of a leader is that you can either command leadership and command respect so people follow you and you have results. And because you've had results before, people follow you and believe you'll do it again. But the environments you've done it in before and now what the environments are like now because the world and COVID is going to forever be for us for many generations the thing we refer back to right because COVID did this big red stop to the world boom not just to a nationality not just to a group of people but to the world it said you are all humans and you don't have an answer for everything so what is the most important thing that you can focus in on and what everybody focused in on was people they care about. That's what they did in COVID, right? And then what can I do to create an environment that allows the people I care about to be okay and to be safe? And what can I do for me that enables me to be okay so I can help my people to be okay? It was that priority order that people went to. So forever the world has been touched by this. So leadership has to shift to acknowledge the workers you have today are not always going to be the workers you have tomorrow. So the company that you're building today and the culture you're building today has got to be able to sustain the workers that will come. Because the workers like you and me, those older, are getting ready to leave, right? Because of our ages. So it's a new workforce that's coming in. What will this workforce need to be able to thrive and to produce for you? The way you want things to be produced. Very different from our era. So it's okay to say, I don't know how to prepare for that. The third generative agile leadership tenant is we trust you to achieve our goals. Trust is essential to effective leadership. Build trust with your team and encourage them to take ownership of their work. Let's go a little deeper with Phil Zofria. So, you know, one of the challenges that we have is like trusting a team is difficult, especially during uncertainties um, or high stakes periods. So share a situation where it was challenging to let go and trust, but you did it anyway. And then talk about what were some of the outcomes after, yeah. you know, allowing yourself to be that vulnerable. Yeah. Um I noticed because I've now 
being with, you know, in coaching, uh, I've noticed sometimes that I hide behind saying I'm helping people. <laughs> so I, I say, Oh, I'm, I'm helping. I'm, you know, but I, by helping, I hide behind that and I'm doing too much. Right. And I'm not letting them do it themselves. So I had an aha moment about that. And it's always great to have someone that'll give you, uh, you know, like our relationship, right? We're always giving ourselves, you know, giving each other, uh, you know, really good feedback that you may not recognize yourself. So, but I had this aha moment and I tried to be vigilant about it. And I think the last time was, you know, at, at uh, last company uh, where we were at even. Uh, and I, I think I tried, I was trying to do too much for the team and I, and the teams. And I said, Hey, Phil, you got to step back. You got big room planning. Uh, I do take into consideration, Hey, what's the risk and the impact. Right. Uh, and especially what's the competence to begin with. We talked about that, right. We need, and I, so what could happen really? They're in big room planning, right? So, so let them go, let them make their, you know, make, let make them make their mistakes. But I think I saw the outcome that you're asking for. I think I saw people learn a lot quicker, right? While they were doing it themselves and they made their, and they made their own mistakes. And by them actually, you know, with me, me in there and watching them uh, making mistakes, learning from them, I was learning too, right? Uh, so, I mean, I, that I had a great outcome with that. Uh, I think in big planning, it might be a little bit different than, you know, just turning s somebody over to, oh yeah, you, you, uh, you run the, the, you know, the, the respirator that's supporting this person. You've never run it before. Yeah, go ahead and make a mistake. Right. <laughs> not a good, probably not a great idea, but you know, yeah. uh, but given, you know, right again, you want to take that into account, but uh, given, you know, that particular scenario that I was talking about, I think it, it helped, you know, it helped them tremendously. It helped me. The fourth generative agile leadership tenet is win and lose as a team. In any organization, there will be successes and failures. We have to develop a mindset that embraces both and learn from both. The fifth generative agile leadership tenet is partner and have conversations to learn more. Great ideas come from collaboration and conversation. Partner to develop strategies for fostering dialogue and learning from our team. The sixth generative agile leadership tenet is run the experiment and evaluate the hypothesis. Innovation requires experimentation. Use adaptive practices to harness new ideas with an open mind and evaluate their potential. The seventh generative agile leadership tenet is, what did we learn from failure to grow? Reflection is essential for growth. Evaluate your team's performance and identify areas for improvement. The eighth generative agile leadership tenet is fun and joy, which is my favorite. We want to enhance productivity by shaping a positive organizational culture that enables individuals and teams to thrive in VUCA environments. Adapting the generative agile leadership way enables us to deliver value. And you may ask, what is value? I would say value is a measurable outcome that can be realized and shared. When value is realized and shared, we have happy customers, they're loyal and satisfied. We have employees who are now happy contributing people. We have organizations that are viable and they thrive. And, you know, delivering value feels good. So in a nutshell, when we get down to generative agile leaders and delivering value, what we have is happy contributing people. All the people work for our organization, our customers and partners, satisfied customers as well, and a thriving business where the owners, shareholders, and stakeholders all benefit from this practice. In closing, remember this. To innovate and thrive, we must be willing to experiment, evaluate, and evolve. That's the mantra 
of the future focused generative leader. As a generative leader, trust is your most potent tool. Use it, nurture it, and watch the magic unfold. Until next time, stay focused and empowered. Thank you for tuning in to Now Share with Dr. Dave. Until next time, keep experimenting, learning, and leading from the center. To learn more about the Generative Leadership of Thrive cohort experience, visit www.nalshare.org. That's www.knolshare.org. Until next time. Let's talk about it. Talk, talk, talk. Let's go deep. We all have something to share. No, no share with Dr. Dave.